Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. This is the channel that's all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in learning about, go ahead and stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create this design right here. This is really simple. It just says, I make 65 look good. And it's a great birthday shirt you can use um, for anybody and you can obviously put any age you want in there. For this design, I went ahead and just used uh, some basic text in Canva, and then I uploaded that design to Photopea to go ahead and use a bulge effect and put a clipping mask over it. So really simple, really quick, easy to make design. If you'd like to learn how to do this, go ahead and stick around. So as always, we're gonna go ahead and start with our blank backdrop. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. I am gonna be designing on black. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select my background color up in the top left-hand corner, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pick black. So for this design, it's gonna be a text-based design, but I'm gonna use a little bit of a clipping mask and um, photo features on it. But let's go ahead and just start with our text. So my text today, <laughs> is going to um, is going to say I make 65 look good. So if you hit T on your keyboard, it'll pull up a text box. And then from here, you can just go ahead, you know, highlight that and type in what you want. I'm going to go ahead and make this in all capitals. So I'm going to put I make on the top line. And I'm going to do this as three different lines. So I'll pull that up. I'm going to hit T again. And then here I'm going to put 65. And then one more time, I'm gonna hit T again, and I'm gonna write look good. Perfect. So now I have, I make 65 look good. And the way I'm gonna have it is this is gonna come really big across the screen. This is gonna be in the middle, really big across the screen. Boop. Boop. That's my way. And then this is also gonna be really big across my screen, just like this. Now we're gonna to have to pick some fonts. Now for this, I want something really bold and big. I want it to be thick because I do wanna put a clipping mask on it. Um, and I want it to look cool. So you can do any font you want, it really doesn't matter. Um, you can do bold, you can go to display and see if you find something fun that way. You know, you can do it however you want. Um, you know, there's some, some cool ones like that. So you can make it decorative. So you can pick pretty much any one you want, doesn't matter. Let's say I just decide to do that. So it's pretty simple. 65, I might make a different font because when it comes to the letters and numbers, what look good in a letter doesn't always look good in a number and vice versa. So with the letters, I'm gonna keep it the, I'm just gonna keep it molar bold. And then for the 65, I'm gonna go ahead and look for something maybe a little bit more decorative, but I still want it to be bold. And so I'm just gonna scroll down, see if I can find something I like better. I want it to be pretty big. Oh, that one's kind of cool right there. Yeah. But I am gonna use a clipping mask so that actually won't work because I'm looking for something that's gonna look good just in a um, silhouette style. And so you can see I can play with this a lot. I want them to be level so I don't want anything like this where the six is above the five. Something like that'll do. Okay, let's just say I want to do this, okay? So it's a little bit more decorative in, in terms of the, um, the number here. Now I want the number to go all the way across the page. I'm gonna send it to the back so it's not in the way. And then the text, I want to go just as wide as the number on the top and the bottom. So just as wide as the number. And I can use my guidelines to make sure that I have it lined up exactly how I want it, so just like that. And I want it to be nice and close, so I don't want too big of a space in between anything. So that looks good so far there. Now, it doesn't really matter where it is in the page because I'm going to be exporting it and then re-uploading it and I can move it anywhere I want, but I could group this together and move it. So if I click anywhere outside of the image, so I can click 
and then just hold down and drag over the whole thing so I've highlighted the entire thing. Now up in your right hand corner I can click group and that will now group this all together as one. So now that I have it all together I can center it on the page, I can resize it so I can do whatever I want with it. And so let's say I'm gonna make it right there. It's right in the center of the page. It's not too big yet because I wanna make sure I have room around the sides for this technique. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and title this. It says, I make 65 look good. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this and I can just go ahead right now and download it. So I'm gonna download it as a PNG with a transparent background. And so there it's downloading. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a clipping mask that I wanna put over the top of it. Now I can pick any clipping mask I want. So it could be textures, it could be animal print, it could be rainbow, it could be glitter, it could be plaids. I mean, it could be any pattern or any gradient. I mean, you can really go think outside of the box with this one and you can pretty much pick anything you want as a clipping mask. You want it to be something that's gonna look good on whatever color you're designing on. Um, so let's say I'm gonna go up to elements and I'm gonna show you just some different cool styles of ones I can do. So I like rainbow. Rainbow's kinda cool if I hit rainbow in graphics um, or photos actually. And I can even do rainbow backgrounds. And so there's a lot of different cool gradients that I can use, swirls that I can use. So all of these would look good as clipping masks. I've done the glitter one before because glitter looks cool. Again, remember your audience if you're doing it for a small child, something like glitter might look good. If you're doing it for, you know, an 85 year old man, glitter might not be the right way to go. So <laughs> again, it just think about your audience when you're picking your, um, your, your backdrop, but here's some cool, um, I like this one right here. It's a little bit psychedelic waviness. And so again, I like the rainbows. I just think it gives it a cool look, but again, you can do anything. We could do leopard print with this. We could do, you know, silver, we could do gold, we could do rose gold. So you can look up different colors like that, different sparkles. I've done space designs with stars. I mean, you really can just get as creative as you want when you're coming up with your clipping masks. I've done tie dye, and so tie dye can be in, so some people will like that. So these are all good, um, kind of good examples of different ones that you can use as a clipping mask. I mean, this one looks kind of cool too. It's kind of all over the place, rainbow, right? And so you can, again, pick anything that you want. Scroll down. I probably wouldn't do the smoke because the black isn't going to look good against a black background. You do want it to be pretty solid with this. So let's just say I'm going to go ahead and do a rainbow, a rainbow clipping mask. That looks pretty good. It's sparkly. And now I can do it this way where it gradiates from one side to the other. So if I had it come like this, again, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller here. It has to be big enough to cover the entire image though. So to make it big enough so that it covers the whole image, I do kind of miss out on some of the colors. I kind of lose the red to get the purple or I lose the purple to get the red. I could also turn it vertically. Whoop. And if I do it vertically, let me just go ahead and level that out. Perfect. I can, again, probably have the same problem here where if I have it enough so that I get the red, I'm losing the purple and so on and so forth. So that's, you know, I'm not really gonna get all the colors of the rainbow if I do it this way, but you can decide kind of how you want, how you want your clipping mask to go. Lots of really, again, fun, fun textures and stuff. You can do any kind of backdrop you want. So. Let's just say I go with this rainbow one here. I think it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so it fills the page a little bit more. Now I can leave it over here and download it. I can put it on another page. It doesn't matter. I'm just using it for the clipping mask. So I'm gonna come up to my top and just so I know, I'm gonna put clipping mask and I'm gonna go ahead and download again. 
And so I'm gonna do a transparent background. I'm gonna download it. So now I'm just gonna have my kind of sparkly rainbow. Good. And now I can lose it. I don't need it anymore. So I can get rid of it entirely. Matter of fact, I can get rid of this entirely too, but I'll probably save it because this would make a good template. So if I like it, then I can keep it and I can just change uh, the age in here. So I can, you know, make 65 look good, make 70 look good, make 75 look good. And so I can just kind of keep this template if I want to, if I like what I, what I get out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna go over to Photopea. So just click Photopea. Um, do a, do a search for photop.com. This is going to come up. You don't have to create an account. It's totally free. It's fast. It's easy. I love to use it. Um, when you open it up, you're just going to get this front page. And from here, you can just hit open from computer. It's going to pull up your downloads. And so the first download you're going to want to pull up is going to be the I make 65 look good. And so it's going to upload your design. It's right here. Now, if you're going to use a clipping mask, and you're going to use um, some effects on it. You want to do the effects first and then the clipping mask last. So the first thing I want to do is I do want to do a little effect on this. I want to give it kind of like a bold effect. So I'm going to come up to edit and then I'm going to scroll down to where it says transform that's towards the bottom and then over to where it says warp. So I want edit, transform, warp. I'm going to click that. And now it's kind of highlighted my design here. And then as I come up to the top under file and slightly to the right, it'll say style. And right now it's on none. If you click that box that says none, it's gonna pull up different styles for you to use. Now this is where you can get creative and in terms of the shape of your design. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that says bulge. So I'm gonna click on bulge. And now you can see it has made my design bulge. Now this is why it's important not to have it too high on the top of your page because it will bulge right off the top of your page. So when I do this, I always want to make it a little smaller and make sure it's centered in the page. That way, whatever warped effects I do on it, I have room around it. Now I don't necessarily want it to be warped this much. This seems like a lot and I can go ahead and change that. So as I look straight up from my design, there's something that says bend. And right now it's at 50%. So I can go ahead and make that lower. So if I click the arrow right next to the 50%, there's gonna be a little slide bar and I can slide that down just a little bit. So maybe not 50, maybe, you know, I can make it as little as I want or as big as I want. Usually I like somewhere around the 30s. So right there that says 34 and I think that looks pretty good. So I'll probably leave it like that. Once I get the basic design the way I want it in terms of whatever warp I want, then I can put on the clipping mask. So to do that, I'm gonna come up to the top left-hand corner where it says the file. I'm going to do open in place. And now I am just going to, from my downloads, open in place the clipping mask that I just downloaded on Canva. And so it's gonna put that clipping mask right over the top of my design. And you can see over on the right hand corner of the page where it's gonna say your background design and then it's gonna have your clipping mask. So these are your two layers with the clipping mask on top. This is how you're gonna want it to be. And now all you have to do is come back up to the top. You're going to move over until you hit layer. Click on layer and then you are gonna scroll about halfway down. It's gonna say clipping mask. All you have to do is click that and it's automatically going to create the clipping mask for your design. So there you go. Now I have that sort of rainbow glitter right on top of my design. It's done. All I have to do now is export it. So I can come up again, top left hand corner, hit file. I am going to scroll about halfway down to where it says export as, and then I'm going to export it as a PNG. So I can click that. Now everything on this box that pops up should look good. It's keeping the original name. It's keeping your original height and width and pixels. So you shouldn't really have to do anything here other than hit save. And now we can go ahead and just jump right back over to Canva. So I'm back on my Canva page here. I'm gonna go ahead and create an extra page because I might wanna use this as a template. So if I scroll down right underneath, it says add a page. I can just click that. And now I've got a new page to work with. Now I can just drag and drop my new download right on top here. 
And now it is uploading it. You can tell right here, once this fills all the way up, it'll be done uploading. And then I can use some photo effects on it if I want to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let it finish uploading. Okay, it's all uploaded. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so I can see it. I'm crop it in just a little bit. And drag it out to fill the page, nice. I'm gonna position it where I want it. So now I got this cool design here. Now I can leave it like this. I think that looks good. And I actually think for this one, that might be how you wanna do it. But you can also put outlines around it the same way that you would putting an outline around anything. So if I click on it, I can use any of my photo effects now at this time by going to edit image. And so I could use the shadow effect if I wanted to put an outline around it, but I think the glitter kind of looks good by itself without an outline, but I could if it was too light or too dark and I wanted an outline around it. I can also at this point play with the brightness and the contrast. If I didn't want it to be quite so bright, you know, I could bring down the saturation. If I want it to be really bright, I can bring up the saturation. So, you know, I can play with it this way. If I want it to be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, I can play with the brightness. And so you can see right here, you can do all of your normal photo effects. You can also do all of your normal filters too. So at this point, if I wanted to use like my photogenic filters, which I do like to do sometimes, I can get slightly different, you know, filtered effects on here too. So if I wanted to make it look a little bit more vintage or retro and just sort of change the, the colors a little bit, I can click on any of these and you can see how it's gonna change those colors. So this looks cool here. It's not quite as bright and rainbowed, but that might look good for a 65 year old. Maybe they don't want it to look that bright. So I do kind of like that um, retro look. So I might go ahead and just apply it. And just give it a second, make sure it's all finalized. And then once I have the design how I want it, I can just go ahead and download the whole thing. And that's all there is to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with, I make 65 look good. I'm gonna delete clipping mask because I don't need that anymore. And now to download it, I can hit download. <clears throat> and when I have more than one page, it'll say select pages. So here is where I can select just page two because I kept my uh, template at the top. So here's my page two. I'm just gonna uncheck those and just check page two. And then I still want a PNG. I still want a transparent background. And so now I've got PNG transparent background page two and I hit download. And now it is ready to upload to any of the platforms you need. You can put it on shirts, you can put it on mugs, you can put it on just about anything that you want. You can put it on a sticker. It would actually probably look good on a sticker. Um, you could put it on a poster, like I said, cards. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you can think of a lot of different creative ways to use this because the sky really is the limit and there's just a million things that you can do with this technique. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section below and I'll try to get back to them as quickly as I can. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.